Your first portable power tool absolutely definitely should be a cordless drill driver. But if you're going to do more than just hang a couple of pictures and shelves around the house, then your first static power tool should be a miter saw. So today I'm going to show you why I think you need a miter saw, what to look out for if you're going to buy one, and also how to set it up to make really accurate cuts. <laughs> Cuts made on mitre saws are generally quicker and more accurate than anything you can do by hand, especially if you're trying to cut a mitre or a bevel or a combination of the two. And using a mitre saw that's been properly set up and with the blade doing all the cutting work means that you can actually focus your attention on making sure you've got an accurate cut. And it's a lot easier to come out with a square, clean cut than if you're just using a hand saw. And using one of these, it's really easy to set up a stop block, which means that you can make repeatable cuts all within a fraction of a millimetre if you've got lots of timber to cut to the same length. A bit like when I was building the wall of this workshop and I needed to cut more than 50 strips of TGV board to exactly the same length. This is when a mitre saw really comes into its own, taking the hard work out of cutting while still giving a clean, accurate cut. And mitre saws can do something easily that's almost impossible to do by hand. And that's to take a very thin cut off of the end of a piece of timber cleanly, like I showed you in my measuring tips video. Because the tungsten cutting tips protrude out from the body of the blade, it's quite easy to butt up a piece of timber to the blade and let the protruding teeth take off a third or half a millimeter cleanly. This is a great way of sneaking up on exactly the right length so you get a nice tight fit. So let's run through the different types of mitre saw. Some of you will recognize that this is my old mitre saw. This is my new trend mitre saw. And they're slightly different. A lot of people will call this a chop saw because all it does is go up and down. Really, chop saws are made for metalwork, but I can understand why people call this a chop saw. Whereas this, although it goes up and down, it also has a slide at the back. So this is a sliding mitre saw as well. The benefit of a sliding mitre saw is it means that you can actually cut boards that are wider rather than something that just goes up and down. Now, with regard to how deep you can cut, that's normally dictated by the size of blade. This is a 10 inch blade, and I think this will cut around about three inches, 75 mil in depth. This is a 184 millimeter blade, which is seven points on inches, and this will cut up to 50 millimeters in depth, two inches, but will cut about eight inches across. Because it's got this slide, it means that you can actually cut something a lot wider. You can also go for a sliding mitre saw that's got a 12 inch blade, and that's obviously gonna get you the biggest cut in both directions, but also it's gonna cost you the most. So you pay your money and you take your choice. So as well as just cutting square, once these are set up properly, the mitre cut is normally on a turntable that swivels around. So now we can cut something that's off of square at any particular angle. And the angles are generally marked on here with some stops at the typical angles that you use all the time, like 15, 22 and a half, 30 and 45. Now, most of these saws, as well as cutting a mitre, can also cut what we call a bevel. And if I just undo this knob at the back, I can lay over the motor and the blade to whatever angle I want, essentially from zero to just past 45 degrees. And this cuts a bevel. At the same time, I can still use the mitre function and swing the turntable and cut a mitre at the same time. So I'm cutting a mitre and a bevel at the same time. And this is what we call a compound cut because it's cutting two different angles at the same time. And this is why a lot of these saws you'll see advertised as compound mitre saws because they can cut the mitre and the bevel at the same time. This one here will cut a bevel quite easily on one side, but this is a single bevel mitre saw. Both of these are single bevel mitre saws because they'll only lay over on one side and then they come back up to 
plum. They won't lay over on the other side. You can get double bevel mitosaurs that lay over on both sides. And they're really useful for professionals that are cut in regularly on both sides. As a DIYer, that's not really required because if you really need to, you can just turn the piece of timber over and always get away with a single bevel mitosaur. So I wouldn't necessarily spend the extra money just to get a double bevel. If you did do that, you'd probably use it very, very infrequently. I suppose the only other main difference between these two, which I've not mentioned, is my new trend saw is actually battery operated, which is going to come in really handy over the summer because I intend to use this saw in the garden for fencing and jobs around the garden quite a lot. So not to have a cable is going to be quite an advantage. So that's a bit of an overview on compound mitosaurs, but it doesn't really matter whether you spend a lot of money or you go for the cheap one or you've got a large one or a small one. None of them are really worth any money unless they cut accurately. So before we use any mitosaur, it's really important to set it up so we get nice, square, accurate cuts. And I've only just got my hands on this one, so I haven't set this one up yet. So I'd like to show you how I set this up to make sure that this is gonna give me nice, square cuts. Just before I run through the setup for this new saw, I need to remind you of a really important date coming up soon in February. It's next week and it's February the 14th. No, nothing to do with Valentine's Day at all. It's far more important than that. It's the Vaunt Mega Week by ITS for all the tools you need. Now Vaunt are an exclusive brand to ITS and they make all kinds of tools, workwear, storage and garden equipment. Next week from the 14th to the 21st, there's going to be deals and freebies on all kinds of items in the Vaunt range and a free flat bit set when you buy any three selected Vaunt products, which is slightly annoying because I've just paid 20 quid for a flat bit set and if I'd waited a couple of weeks, I could have got that free. Anyway, too late for me, but still in time for you. As usual, if you order before 7 p.m., you get next day delivery. And if you're going to spend more than £60, remember, put in my code here and you get a free goodie bag with every order. Anyway, back to the miter saw. So when you're setting up your saw, there's some items that are quite easy to adjust to make sure you get nice square cuts. But there's a couple of items that we still need to check, although they're almost impossible to fix, but we still need to check them first of all. Before I do anything, just make sure that I've got the battery out or it's unplugged if it's on a mains one. And the first thing I want to make sure of is that this bed, which is like the all important part of the saw, is actually nice and flat and there's no high points or low points. I can actually see in the reflection it's been machined so it should actually be pretty good but probably worth checking it anyway and actually putting a straight edge on that I can see that that is absolutely flat. So that's not surprising because this is a new saw but if you've got let's say a second hand saw and you've got any high spots or low spots on that it is possible to sand it down because this is aluminium so you can work on it. However, a new saw like this, if this isn't perfect, I would definitely take it back, but that's looking pretty good. Similarly, the fence at the back here, we want to check that's all in one plane, and we can do that by just resting the same straight edge, but horizontally, and that looks pretty good to me as well. That's absolutely bang on. So that's not surprising because this is a new saw from a good company, but it's worth checking because if we haven't got that in line and we haven't got a bed that's flat, you're going to have major problems in the future, irrespective of what adjustment you make. So the next thing I like to do is to make sure that the saw is coming down absolutely vertically against this bed. And to do that, I'm just going to use a little engineer's square here. And I have to use a small one because it's fairly tight to fit in here. Now, the bevel system on this means that as it moves to one side, it comes back onto a stop here that's got a screw that's controlled with an Allen key. So if it comes back, I can adjust where it stops there. And that stop should, in theory, be absolutely vertical. So it's worth checking if we go to the other side of the blade and just pull the guard up. I can use this engineer's square avoiding the tungsten teeth on the blade to touch the blade with it as far down as possible to see if the blade 
is square to the bed. And I can see actually that they've got a bit of a gap here. There's quite a big gap, to be honest with you. I can probably see it a little bit easier if I shine a light. There's quite a large gap. So this whole thing wants to roll to the right. But there's an Allen key fix in here that I can screw. And the more I screw, the more the thing becomes plumb. Let's just try that. How does that look? Maybe a touch more. That looks pretty good to me. There's very little light coming through there, if anything. Pretty close, actually. So the next thing I want to do is to check how square the blade is cutting relative to this fence. And I've got a little trick here that just helps that whole process. So what I'm going to do is I've got some masking tape here, which I'm just going to put over the cut line. And what that's going to help us do is to get a really accurate idea of where the blade currently is. I need to then make a little bit of a cut. Let's see if I can do this properly. Battery out before I forget. So what we've got here is a nice crisp cut from the blade that I can actually compare how that looks relative to the fence just with a square. We'll do a secondary check in a minute with a piece of timber, but this is an easy way. Now I know exactly where the blade is. This is very easy to get pretty close actually. So if I just offer a square up nice and tight onto that fence, so I can see from where I'm looking that it's actually touching, my square is touching this side of the cut, but then wandering away as we come further away from the fence. So the whole fence needs to shift a little bit in the clockwise direction. And what's quite nice on this particular miter saw is the Allen key for that is actually held in the saw. So as long as you keep it in this right same place with a rubber grommet, you'll never lose it. So I'm going to slightly slacken off this screw at the back here. And now this whole fence can actually rotate. So if I push this forward just a touch, I can com now compare it with the masking tape. So each time I do this, I don't actually have to refer back to the blade because I've made this cut in the masking tape, which is a nice way of doing it. I think I've overcooked it a little bit, so back again. That's looking pretty good. Now, there's always a chance when you do tighten these back up that they're going to move and shift. So I'm going to very lightly tighten these back up and check again before I really tighten them. So, we've got the blade vertical relative to the bed. We have the blade near enough perpendicular to the fence. So what I'm going to do now is make a couple of cuts. And if you make them in the right way, you can actually exaggerate any errors on this. And I'll show you how to do that. So with the timber cut, if I then flip over one side and then push them together, what I've essentially done is doubled the error along this line. So if I've got any inconsistency, I should now see it because I've got twice the error with it flipped over. So if I just get a straight edge. And that is looking pretty good, actually. Obviously, suffice it to say, the timber that you use should be planed all round. It should have parallel sides as well. I've been using this for different projects, so I know that it's nice, straight, square timber. So 
So similarly, I've done the same with a piece of three by two, but standing upright. So I've cut it down. It's sitting on this bench. The cut looks good. It's sitting vertical. So once again, if I twist it around, then I should exaggerate any errors by two. So let's just have a look at that. Now, that's interesting because I can actually see a gap at the bottom. So actually to get them to join, I'm actually lifting the bottom. It's coming down like this at the moment. So I think it needs to be a little bit more, raised a little bit more. So that's sitting properly. If I flip this 180, let's see how it sits now. Oh, it's like that is like totally different. Just a small adjustment like that. You can immediately feel that it's just like bang on compared to the last one. So it's worth doing that cut twice because if you don't, you're gonna to have to live with that forevermore. So really happy with that vertical cut and I can only really tell when I flipped one piece of the timber over to exaggerate that error. It's so small that using a square like this is not really enough to give you a really accurate representation of whether it's correct or not. If you exaggerate it by flipping it over and sit it on a flat bench like this you can really immediately tell whether it's correct or not. Very happy that that is. And it goes without saying that the perpendicular cut to the fence, if you get that correct, then the preset angles of 15, 22 and a half, 30 and 45 should just naturally follow and be correct. These are built into the machine while it's being cast. And I've never had a problem with those as long as you've got the initial cut perpendicular and correct to the fence. So really happy with that. I now know that I've got this square in both directions. I know that if I cut anything on a project, it's going to be nice and square and that can now go into action. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please have a look at our Patreon page. The Patreons are growing rapidly and there's extra videos over there and extra content. So please go and check us out and support the channel. So until next week, I'll see you then.